the, the first thing that I want to show you is um, what's what I I guess I refer to probably everybody is just a half hitch um, and I, I just do it with my finger um, so I've got my thread here and my my bobbin and thread here hanging down I've got my finger here I'm just gonna plant my fingertip um, onto I'm gonna get a little bit of extra uh, I'm gonna put my fingertip onto this thread I'm gonna bring my bobbin around my fingertip and then I'm going to take my fingertip and I'm going to stick it up against the eye of the hook. I'm going to let that slide off and I just put a knot, um, a half hitch knot, in this fly. So I, I use that um, very often. Um, I use a whip finisher if I need to be really precise where I want to put a knot or when I'm finishing off a fly. Um, I'll use my whip finisher, which I'll, I'll be showing you a couple of those here in just a minute. But if I'm just tying and I want to use my bobbin cradle and tie on some material or, or put on some hackle, um, one of the first things I'm going to do is exactly what I just showed you. And I don't have to reach for any tools or anything. I'll just wrap my thread around my finger, stick my fingertip on the eye of the hook, let it slide off, pull it tight. Okay. Um, yes, there is a reason why I stick my finger there. Um, if I don't, um, you might get lucky and get that not to stay on there, but it's challenging and you don't need to. Um, so we'll just wrap it around. By putting my fingertip there, that thread cannot escape off the front of the hook. Um, and there you go. We've got our um, kind of locked down there. And this is where, again, I, I showed in an earlier video, this is the bobbin cradle here that I just moved back into position. And um, that's how I use, that's how you use the um, bobbin cradle right now I'm hands free um, you can see the thread is completely out of the way if I'm working on other materials here on the fly um, my, th that, my thread is out of the way but the nice thing is is what that half hitch did for me um, was it's gonna allow me to rotate this vise all day long um, without unraveling or unwinding the thread um, so I'll throw a I have a really quick whip, whip finish in with my fingers or a half hitch in with my fingers um, when I'm going to be using my bobbin cradle. So now it's on to the more technical. Um, I'm going to do my best to show this to you very slow. Um, you're going to need to be patient. Um, you're going to need to practice. Uh, and after you've you know, used all of your patience and done a lot of practicing. Um, this will just be second nature for you. Um, but this is the whip finishing tool. Uh, lots of different varieties. I'm, in fact, I'll show you a different one. Um, it's got this hook here on the top. It comes down around and you'll notice there's kind of a notch down here in the bottom. Um, both of those you'll see in a second are incredibly important. Um, and most commonly, um, that, that top swivels. Uh, just like that. Okay, so when I'm doing my whip finishing um, on a fly, um, I, I'm usually holding it right about there. I just, just have it pinched between my thumb and forefinger. Um, I've got that hook facing this direction. I'm going to take my thread and my bobbin, and it's um, kind of down on an angle here, so hopefully you can see it. And I'm just going to hook that top hook on my thread. Okay, so you can see that that's gotten. Now I'm going to take this behind and under and that notch. So you can see now I'm behind the entire whip finisher, but my thread is resting inside of that notch. Once I have that done, I'm just going to turn that thing um, up just like that. I'm going to try to keep my thread uh, parallel. Uh, to my the shank of the hook. I'll put in a few turns just like that and then all you do is you ease this off then it will slide right off that little notch. I still have it in here um, on the hook, the hook on the top and I'm just going to pull my bobbin back tight and there you go. Um, I've just uh, done the whip finish okay finish okay so let's just do that one more time. So here we go. Here's our the top hook. I've got this held just like this. I've got my thread now in my top hook. I'm bringing my thread under that notch. I'm going to move everything up. 
and then I'm going to make a wrap and it is now wrapping over the tag end uh, I've got two or three turns in now I'm going to let it slide off the notch keep it on the hook of the whip finisher and then just pull that right into place just like that and that's that's how you use a whip finisher so I wanted to do um, at least one more whip finish here um, kind of demonstrating how you you finish off the um, your fly if you're wanting to build up a little bit of a head and tie a knot at the same time that's where the whip finisher comes in really handy so I've, I've positioned my thread up here near the eye of the hook pretending that I've just finished tying a fly um, and I'm ready to tie it off um, put some head cement on it and be done with the fly and move on to my next one um, so I've got my thread there um, we're gonna do this a little bit faster uh, just so you can see that once you get this figured out it's not that challenging so two, three, four, five, down, off, let go, just like that. Um, and now I've built up a little bit of a head. And if you want to be extra secure, um, you certainly can. And you can throw in a few more whip finishes. So again, I'm right up at the head of my hook. And I'm just going to two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's pretty excessive. It's bending the crap out of my hook. but. What it's showing you is we're, we're starting to build up ahead here. Um, you know, hopefully you can see that it's starting to get thicker. Um, pointed at it right there with my whip finisher. Um, we'll exaggerate that a little bit by doing another one as well. Um, there we go. So you can see you can do as many um, turns as you want. You can do as few turns as you want. Um, we put a whole lot there. Um, pull that tight. And now hopefully you really can see the different varieties and models. Um, this is one of the other ones that I'll use from time to time. Um, and it's a whip finisher that's really made for um, much smaller flies. It allows you to get into some tight spaces. So uh, he, I'm sure you can see the you know the size difference here between this is my primary. Um, this one I'll use when I'm doing smaller flies, but they're going to function just just the same even though they're different sizes. Now I'm going to show you how to use the smaller whip finisher. Um, it's going to be just the same as what we just did with the, the larger one. So we're going to hook our thread with that hook on the top. I'm going to bring my hook or the thread back and into this notch um, and back. So I've got it right in position. Now I'm going to pivot the whole thing up like that and then I'm just going to let that go around the shank of my hook several times. I'm going to tip this forward and let that thread slide off of that notch here. Pull on my thread and pull it out. Okay, um, And that's how you use the whip finisher. Uh, like I said, practice. Um, and maybe watch this slow down and maybe I'll do a slow motion version of this. Um, uh, once you once you get it down, and I, it won't take you that long, uh, but once you get it down, um, you'll find that you're using your whip finisher quite a lot um, as you're finishing flies. It does a great job of um, putting a head on the fly. At the same time, it's tying off, the, tying the knots in, onto your hook to secure your your thread. Um, and when you're finished with the whole uh, shebang, you can usually you're going to be up at the eye of the hook, but You'll see you can now um, clip off your, your thread with your scissors and that's going to stay in place. Um, what I'll do at that, that point is sometimes, most commonly I'll put a little bit of head cement on the thread wraps there. Um, it just absorbs into that thread and it'll, it'll help keep that knot in place, make your fly a little bit more durable. Mm -hmm.